we set out to find scientific proof of which of the top five European leagues is, in fact, the Farmers League. But there's a lot of different ways to break this down. We're gonna start with the most obvious, which is how many different teams actually win the league. And this is where a surprising Farmers League front runner enters the fray. That would be the Bundesliga, who over the last 10 years has only had one team raise the trophy. I'll give you a couple of seconds and it's, it's not this one. It's obviously Bayern Munich who've won the Bundesliga every single year over the last 10 years, which is an incredible run and a credit to Bayern Munich, but also a uh, for everybody else. After that, we actually end up with a bit of a three-way tie. Maybe you didn't expect that, but Ligue 1, Serie A, and La Liga all check in with three teams having won the title in the last decade. Ligue 1, of course, being the one that's the most surprising, but PSG did fumble the bag to Lille last year. Monaco also snuck in a title in 2017, but PSG, to its credit, does have the other eight. And bringing up the rear, the Prince Premier League, looking good. Five different winners over the last 10 years, even though out of the last five years, Manchester City has won four titles. So things seem to be shifting towards a change in the Premier League, but at least for now, last 10 years, five different winners, including the most improbable of all, Leicester City, which is bonus points for the Premier League and our current leader in the clubhouse being Bayern Munich. Yay, I, I mean the Bundesliga, sorry. We move on to the second stage of scientific, definitely not, but kind of maybe sort of competition to determine our Farmers League. And we find the Football Observatory, which has compiled transfer spends via league for all five of the major leagues. And the more you spend, obviously, the less of a Farmers League you are. That's our second hurdle that you need to get over. We'll start with the ones that have been falling behind already. That'd be the Bundesliga. And if you look, $920 million spend in 2019, the most recent spend, at just $670 million for the year. You know, when we're working with these kind of figures, kind of chump change. Hisk tiss. We'll just go ahead and get the Premier League out of the way for the second consecutive metric. The Premier League is, is fine. They spent over $3 billion in 2022 alone, and the lowest figure in the last five years was $1.7 billion. La Liga has seen a sharp drop-off in its expenditure over the last three years, but in 2018 and 2019, it cleared the billion mark very comfortably. And despite a paltry 2021, one, they rebounded by spending $720 million over the last calendar year, which still beats out the Bundesliga. Perhaps surprisingly, our second runner so far in this part of the competition is Serie A, which has spent over a billion dollars on transfers every year over the last five years, except for 2021, when it spent 0.78 billion, which is 780 million. Now, Ligue 1 did spend $770 million last year, but it also boasted the second lowest number at $500 million the year before, and it's only one of two leagues to have not cleared a billion dollars in transfer expenditure over the last five years, although it did clear it six years ago at 1.12 billion dollars spent. Where compared to the Bundesliga, there's no billion dollar spent anywhere in here. But let's say we attribute that to smart spending. The Bundesliga, though, still running last. You might actually help the Bundesliga out at this point. Manscaped, a fabulous new beard grooming kit, and it's gotten me at the perfect length. The name of it is the Beard Hedger Pro Kit. It comes equipped with a whole bunch of great stuff, and you can get all of it for 20% off and free shipping at the link at the top of the description. The first and most important thing this bad boy. This thing can get you set up from Gandalf to a completely clean shaven face. Cordless, waterproof, smooth to the touch. You also get a wonderful beard conditioner. Boom. You even have beard shampoo if you're going for the whole Gandalf length sort of thing, you know? And if you get it right now, it also comes with gifts. You get a freaking comb, you get a freaking brush, and they have different lengths on it. You even get a pair of scissors. I've never been allowed to play with scissors before. And you can get this whole Beard Hedger Pro Kit for 20% off and free shipping at the link in the top of the description. And thank you to Manscaped for sponsoring us uh, for a very long time. But the Bundesliga doesn't have the Beard Hedger Pro Kit, so it's now the bottom of our standings. So we've seen poor spending effect to Ligue 1 and the Bundesliga in our unofficial rankings, but right now the parody of Ligue 1, which might be a surprise, is what is keeping the Bundesliga in the Farmers League spot. That's before we go to the next measure, Champions League participation. I'm talking about how many actually get through to the knockout stage. And there are two that are basically acquitted immediately because England and Spain have excellent knockout stage participation. If you look at this year, you might not think that's the case. Spain is actually stuck on one, Germany has four, Italy has two different teams that are here, England per usual has four, and France also has 
one. But if we go on to the last couple of years, you'll see a variety of Spanish teams taking part in the knockouts. Real Madrid, Villarreal, and Atletico Madrid are there. Four English teams again. We go back another year. There are four Spanish teams in the Champions League knockout. And a year after that, there are four Spanish teams in the Champions League knockout. So they are clearly very good. There is only one country that never at any point gets three teams into the Champions League knockouts, and that would be Ligue 1. Bundesliga does a good job of putting a variety of teams in. Borussia Mönchengladbach, RB Leipzig, Borussia Dortmund, all joining Bayern Munich at various points. Well, it's just Lille and Lyon on two occasions over the last four years that have joined PSG in the Champions League knockout. Oh, also Eintracht Frankfurt this year for Germany. They're doing well. Bundesliga pulling itself out of the last spot because France put together a pretty bad performance. And there's another metric that comes from this big European competition. Who's won at last? Yeah, Real Madrid has five. Barcelona's got one. Bayern Munich has two. And three for England. Two going to Chelsea. That's just over the last decade or so. But an Italian team hasn't won since 2010, despite making the final. And you know, a French team hasn't won since, <laughs> excuse me, Marseille in 1993, which is, by the way, the only French team to have ever won the Champions League, which you were probably going to get here eventually. That means that Nottingham Forest has more Champions Leagues than all of France, which is a lot of minus points, putting the French League firmly in the farmer's spot. But the Bundesliga right above them, and then Italy, and then Spain and the Premier League were just going to send way up into the stratosphere because there's simply no way they're going to be caught at this point. Because the Premier League and the Liga produce a good variety variety of winners, they spend a lot of money, they get different teams into the Champions League knockouts, and they're able to win the world's biggest club competition very consistently. So we have our final three. Going into an all do or die match, Serie A would really need to flop in order to end up in that last spot. I really thought we would be able to call the video there, run a couple of these tests, and then one league would clearly be the Farmers League, <laughs> Ligue 1. But because it was so close, I needed a different way to separate out these leagues, so I figured I would come up with the Zealand method to scientifically determine who is the Farmers League. So what we were going to do is take the last three teams in the league for each of the last five seasons and then add all of their point totals. Now, there were some concerns. Uh, one particularly terrible season skewing the results, so we took the lowest and highest point total over the last five years and threw those out to avoid outliers really messing with the results. Second, the Bundesliga plays less games by four, so we would take the winning percentage and and then multiply it by the number of games left to give them an additional couple of points to make this fair. And we also use that method for Ligue 1 season that ended because of the pandemic to add on the points that those teams would have gained if they continued on the exact same win percentage so that we could keep these numbers fair. So without further ado, the league with the best worst teams is Ligue 1. And you definitely did not see that coming. You see, Ligue 1 actually dropped 426 points from its worst teams. It had the best season from any of these teams. Nantes got relegated with a 40-point season. That's supposed to be like the magic threshold. They were two points away from 14th in the table and still got sent down. Ligue 1 produced some fabulous 18th and 19th place teams. In fact, in every single year, only one team maximum was below 30 points. That's really good. Coming in at number two, the answer may surprise you because it's the Bundesliga. And that's two of the three potential farmers leagues that the Zealand method is saying are, are actually pretty good, at least at the bottom. Now, the Bundesliga obviously was a little weird because we had to do this sort of math on the side and add on a couple of points essentially to each team, but they ended up with 386 points, which is still pretty significantly lower than Ligue 1. It, it's still pretty good, uh, and they almost every time ended up with two teams in the 30s, except for one year, which was in their defense four years ago. I'm looking at you, Lou. Losers, all three of you. Unbelievable. And that leaves us with just Serie A who was awful. Serie A's total point total was 347. It's 80 below what Ligue 1 was able to do over a similar period. That is a really large difference when you're talking about the three worst teams in a league. Serie A had a, a few good highs. Its high was actually 38, but its low was 17, and the obvious average of all of this was just significantly lower. Serie A did not produce, it's the only one, that didn't produce a single season where 19 of the 20 or 17 of the 
18 teams reached at least 30 points. In fact, the closest they got was last year, where Genoa and Venezia were keeping things spicy up until the final day, but they, be, they both fumbled the bag. Genoa lost on the last day of the year. So where does this leave us in our standings? We've got Serie A, Ligue 1, and the Bundesliga. Well, I'm gonna let you decide who our scientific loser is. Serie A spent more money, but its worst teams are worse and hasn't won the Champions League in a while. Bundesliga has won the Champions League recently, but it spends no money uh, and has absolutely no diversity of champions. But it gets a lot of teams into the knockouts, which Ligue 1 doesn't really do. There's not a whole lot of variety there, but there is, weirdly, a lot of variety in terms of who wins the league. And the bottom of the league, great. They do a really good job of keeping up with the Joneses and competing with everybody. That technically means they're the best for anybody can win on any given match. There's really two leagues that are entirely clear of the accusations, and those would be the Premier League and La Liga. So rest easy if you're Spanish or English. You might need to break out the garden hoe, though, if you're from one of the other three. But hold on, there's, there's no reason for you to have to go anywhere. We've got a perfectly wonderful video that I've decided is a good video for you to watch that you can check out right up there. We do a lot of cool videos here. Most aren't this stupid, but they offer good information. Just come into my Twitch stream after this video comes out. We'll make a poll, and then we can use all of this information to determine who is the Farmer's League from our three worthy contenders.